thanks and welcome to the shaman's view, the perspective from the invisible world. So let's uh, let's take a moment and and light our candle, get ready for our practice today, which is the experience of the journey beyond death. And I invite you all to light a candle if you can get it to work. And And I'd like you to begin to join me with a meditation, a very short meditation, inhaling to a count of three, exhaling to a count of five, inhaling one, two, three, pausing at the top of the breath and exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, pausing at the bottom of the breath, Inhaling to three, one, two, three. Pausing at the top of the breath and exhaling to five, two, three, four, five. Pausing at the bottom of the breath. Inhaling to three, one, two, three. Pausing at the very top of the breath and exhaling to five. This is a practice that resets our fight or flight so that we're able to break free from the freeze mode that fight or flight always inevitably becomes. Today we're frozen, the economy's frozen, we're frozen inside our homes, our immune systems are frozen. This practice will break you free of the fight or flight. We'll be able to access the higher brain, which is the brain that can break free from time and free from death. And that's the topic that we have today. So if you have your candle with you and your candle later, perhaps later, you may wanna to bring to the fire whatever it is that no longer serves you, the beliefs, the ideas, and put in that expectation for the break, breakthrough vaccine, the miracle cure, this is waiting for pharma, big pharma to rescue us when there's so many things that we can be doing to prevent and to make sure that we stay healthy and we stay strong and we grow a new body during these times of tremendous change. You know, I've got, a, I was talking to a friend of mine and he was asking me, when do you think the vaccine is gonna be ready, Alberto? And I go, you're looking for pharma to rescue us? They're gonna make us more addicted to all of the all of the chemicals that we're being fed all the time. The this is the age of pharmageddon that we're living in. So put all those limiting beliefs, all those things that keep you waiting for something to happen, and blow them into your stick and put them in the fire. This is the time to really get rid of limiting beliefs. And remember that for the shaman, all beliefs are limiting. You wanna develop a hypothetical relationship with the world. Letting go, releasing everything that confines you to that realm of fear. And let that stick burn down on its own Today, I want to speak to you about the journey beyond death. The, um, we live in the world of masters and slaves. And in this world, it's better to be a master than to be a slave. But the shamans of old and even today, they become the observers. They are the watchers. They see how we live in a world of competition, of getting ahead, of accumulating things and wealth, that world of masters and slaves that we want to break free from, and that today we're being forced to step out from and to abandon completely because it is an old story that no longer serves us. It is tired, old, and it's exhausted itself. And it's time to break into the land of freedom, not of masters or slaves. There's a part of us that, that longs to be free. 
And to be free, the shamans understood you had to make that journey beyond death because it was fear and ultimately the fear of death that kept, kept us bound to this world of masters and slaves. So the shamans of old were master cartographers. They were cartographers of the soul and the invisible world. And in the same way that we can follow a deer through the forest, they were able to follow the luminous footsteps, the prints that a man or a woman left in the course of their lives and that would take them into their future beyond death. And they developed practices to make that journey back home to the world of spirit today, while we still have a body to come back to and not having to wait to the end of your life because it's not a very good time to be asking for directions. They were cartographers of the invisible world, the shamans of the Americas, the Tibetan masters, the, the early Buddhists, the ancient shamans of the Himalayas, they mapped the invisible world beyond death and into infinity. We also have our own maps, but these maps were reports that are brought back to us from people that have had a near-death experience. And the thing about a near-death experience is that if it lasts for any longer than four or five minutes, it's no longer near, it's permanent because the brain and vital organs cannot live depleted of oxygen for more than that. So imagine using your guide to one of the great cities in the world, a guide that was brought back by someone who had been there for five minutes only. You're gonna miss all of the best sites, especially if that person that had the near-death experience um, had it while in an automobile accident, in major trauma, or with too much alcohol. But all of the reports that we have, and there are millions of them in the West, of people that have been resuscitated in the operating table, that have been brought back by emergency medical personnel from the scene of an accident, they all report an extraordinary journey into the light, the journey to the afterlife. They report almost unanimously, that death is simply a doorway. But it's not only a doorway to the continuity of our essence and of our being, but it's actually a place that we can journey to in order to be trained, in order to receive the wisdom that is increasingly scarce in the world today. The pharaohs in Egypt, when their sarcophagus were being built, and remember, a sarcophagus is huge, weighs tons, takes a long time to carve, and it had to be made to order, precisely the size of the pharaoh. They got to try it out before they died. They were sealed in this chamber. The, the, the master architect knew exactly how much oxygen was in each one of them and how long you could survive if you were able to calm your heart and not step into fear. And hours later, when the sarcophagus was open, they the Pharaoh would come back with a wisdom and a gift that he had acquired in the afterlife, in the invisible world. This is the great exploration. And the shamans describe levels that the Tibetans call the bardos. These are realms that we must journey through in order to come to return to the world of spirit, to the fourth world the fourth world that we source from, where we reincarnate from, the spiritual villages and communities that we belong to that are in this fourth realm. So I wanna take you today through a description of these maps and then an invitation for you to draw your own maps, to explore them. A map is only as good as the traveler who puts it to use. So the shaman's world, understood or believed that the invisible world mirrored the visible world, that as below, so above. And they saw that the visible world had a mineral kingdom, it had a plant kingdom, an animal kingdom, and then there was the world of humans, and they believed that the invisible world also followed this pattern 
or perhaps it was only a body of metaphors that they left us with. But I want to take you through these four levels of the invisible world. And I want to invite you to explore them because today the gates of heaven have been flung open. They're totally available to us today. You don't have to wait until you die to make this journey. You can do it so much more easily today. Many of you have been doing this already during your sleep and in the dream time, the dreams that you're having about receiving healing and about being blessed and about being cleansed and reconciliation are your out of body journeys already to these realms. So first realm is the realm of the stone people. And take this metaphorically, of course, take these as stories and descriptions of these levels that have different degrees of subtlety and of qualities and of vibration and of wisdom. So first level is the stone people world. And it's a perfectly nice place if you happen to be a stone, but not a very pleasant place for a human. It is dark. You don't have eyes to see or hands to feel. And you can sense there are people around you and you're afraid and there's no light and you're lost. You're unconscious. You die unconsciously. And so many people are dying unconsciously today, full of fear, in accidents, in, alone in hospitals, unable to be visited and come to closure with their loved ones. It's not a place that you want to be stuck in. This is a stone people realm. It's one of the bardos that the Buddhists speak about or the purgatories that Christianity refers to. Perfectly nice place if you are a stone, but you don't want to be stuck there. The realm above it is the plant world, the plant people world. So this is after the dawning of the light, after the coming of the light. It is a green world. Your eyes are open. You're beginning to become conscious. You can sense that you have a body, but you can't quite recognize it because it's an energy body. It's your luminous body. And you're, but you're becoming awake. And this is a place of healing and repair where we come to heal with the plant essences. In fact, the shamans, even today, will journey to the plant spirit world to retrieve a special plant or healing remedy for one of their patients. They will be guided by the plants to bring back the medicine that someone needs. And this is where we go for our plant medicine as well. The second world, the plant world. The third is the animal spirit world. It's the place of the great spirit animals. This is where the wolf and the saber-toothed tiger and the dinosaurs and the ancient creatures that lived in this earth, they still exist in this realm. But the animals, according to Lord, don't have individual souls. They have collective souls. It's the soul of the wolf. It's the soul of the eagles, it's the soul of the grasshoppers, of these species that have differentiated, but they don't have individual souls like we do. This is the place of the great power animals, of the spirit animals, of the power of the bison and the elephant and the deer and the mouse, the perseverance of the mouse. This is where the shaman journeys to, to receive those gifts of the spirit animals and where he develops or she develops allies in this world in the event that he has to journey there to help somebody ascend, wake up fully. And you, this is a place that many souls get stuck in. This is one of the higher bardos, but it's still a place of suffering. And But you're waking up. The individual is waking up. It's beginning to recognize and remember their essence, practices forgiveness and gratitude, and is able to discover that they don't have to live in fear. They're waking up to love and discovering that love indeed is the antidote of fear. And then the fourth world is the world of humans. But not only the world of humans, but the world 
of whales and dolphins. Humans, whales, and dolphins that have individual souls. We have individual souls. The animals have collective souls. And this is where the villages that we come from. When we run across each other, when we recognize each other, you meet someone that you feel that you have known forever. It's because we come from these villages. And we reincarnate together. We come back into physical form, into bodies together in order to fulfill a mission. And all of us that are born today belong to a village. That's why we are so familiar to each other. And we came here, of course, to bring about the birth, become the midwives of a new humanity and a new world that we're dreaming into being. Now, it's interesting, dolphins, humans, whales, these are also the three species out of 40 million species in the planet that have that don't have death programmed into their DNA. Every other species are 40 million, 39.999 million of them, the female dies as soon as she's not reproductively viable. They don't go into menopause, they don't become grandmothers except three species. Recent discovery in science. They're the three species that have the greatest brain to body weight ratio, the most intelligent species on the planet. Humans, dolphins, and whales. Amazing coincidence with these ancient mythologies. We have individuated, we have individual souls. And this is the realm where we're able to visit the healing centers, that um, the, the places of higher learning, the universities, the spiritual, the temples, the places of wisdom that we can grow from. And according to legend, humanity together with the dolphins and whales are emerging. We're in a process of ascending into the fifth world, the fifth sun. And this is what all of the ancient prophecies speak about, that we are emerging into that fifth sun. And in the process, we will grow new bodies. We're not going to look different, but our bodies will be more resilient. We won't learn through getting sick anymore. We will attain extraordinary levels of health, and we will find our peace, and we will live sustainably. This is the promise of a new human that will age and heal and die differently. We'll be able to reverse aging. We're doing that today already with what you eat and how you forgive and how you upgrade the quality of your energy field. This is the fifth sun and the fifth world. And this is where we want to go to anchor ourselves. We want to take up residence, not just be a visitor. We want to get a permanent visa to this fifth sun, this fifth world and embody that today and we do that through the journeying process journeying is the practice of shamans this is our practice in the east the practice is meditation it's a beautiful practice it's part of my daily routine i meditate every day then the west our practice is prayer beautiful beautiful practice also part of my routine every day. I love to pray. But the shamans practice journeying. And in the act of journeying into who we are becoming, we bring that back with us into our world. And we create a standing wave in the quantum field that is able to accelerate this process for others. So the shaman wants to practice the spirit flight not only when we're sleeping and when we're dreaming and able to leave our bodies and travel, but we want to practice it consciously through the journeying process. We want to journey through these realms so we're familiar with them. We don't get stuck in any of them. We want to be able to then be guided by the shamans, by the luminous ones, the Buddhas, the Christic beings in this fourth level to show us the way to the fifth, to the fifth world of our becoming so that we can then become a guide 
and facilitate others in this process of ascension. Last time we met, we looked at the techniques for ascension for helping someone who had died, a loved one. We have many, many friends that are right now, unfortunately, going through a very difficult time. Many of them are dying. We're helping them to die, to return back to the fourth world, to go to healing centers in the spirit world, to not get caught in the stone people world, in the worlds of darkness, or in the plant worlds, which are very tangled for humans. Perfectly nice place if you're a rhododendron. Or in the animal spirit world, fearful places for us, but very beautiful places for an eagle or a wolf. We want to go back to the fourth world, which is our place of origin. And for the shaman, we want to take this opportunity when the gates of heaven have been flung open to install our soul, to source from this fifth sun, to take the step up in who we are becoming. And what differentiates the shaman from the mystic is that the mystic will go into these beautiful, exquisite, luminous realms and take up residence there. What the shaman does is the shaman goes to these magnificent, light-filled domains, is infused with the wisdom, and then brings that back to our world, to humanity, to become a catalytic agent, an agent of transformation, to bring this love and this wisdom into the world today fearlessly. So let's stop waiting. Let's journey together into this fifth world. And I invite you to set your intention to do so tonight in your dreams. I'm going to share with you a technique for remembering your dreams and instructing your soul to journey. So you take a small glass of water, fill it, very small glass, and drink half of it and tell yourself, when I wake up, I'm going to drink the other half of this glass and I will recall all of my dreams. And then when you wake up in the morning, drink the other half and take a few moments in bed. And while you're doing this, as you go to sleep, instruct your soul to journey back to the villages and the places that we originate from. Like a salmon that goes back upstream to the place where it was spawned, to take you back to the place of your source and your origin. That you may visit the healing centers in the spirit world, the, the universities where the, where the wisdom is kept and is offered to us readily, and perhaps to guide us to the world of our becoming. So that's the process. Really excellent to recall your dreams. Half a glass before you go to bed, the other half in the morning. As you master this process, you'll take a half a glass before you go to sleep, and then you drink the other half while you're asleep in your dream so you can wake up inside your dream. But that's a little bit more advanced technique. Journey, discover who you were before you were born and who you will be after you die. And that eliminates fear. It makes you fearless because you know the way back home. Then fearlessly, we can begin to dream a new world of being and of becoming. Next time we meet, next Friday, I will guide you on this journey using a drum. In the meantime, you can guide yourself with your drum, using a drum and using your rattle, or simply relaxing deeply, sending your luminous body out back home. It knows the way back home. That's where you came from. Thank you very much for joining me today. Take the beauty out into the world during these days, and I will see you next Friday.